right, guys. If you just joined me, this is Big Grandpa. We're going to do a little tutorial today. I'm opening up for questions. And you might be a basic, an intermediate, or an advanced user. You may know more than me in certain areas, and that's fine. But this is a chance for anyone who uh, wants to get an overview of exactly what happens what to expect when you get into daisy modding and how to stay sane i'm gonna share some of those tips with you guys on my live stream here today so it's in about 60 seconds let me grab one of these lovely little mixed fruit drops sugar free i believe yes that's good down to my last. So if you join me and you're listening, drop a hello, g'day, what are you doing in the uh, message thing. So I know you guys are there. And any questions, any suggestions, any ideas, I want you guys to um, jump in and just feel free to, to ask me. Well, I think we'll get things started. Let's flick over. All right. This is the channel. This is me head. So guys, welcome along today. Um, today I thought was a really good time to open up to a, uh, a bit of a video on what to expect when you get into Daisy modding. Hey, what's up, brother? Good to see you, Henry Hens. And or Henry Ann's, I got it right. Hey, Chris B. Stoked to see what you have for us, Grandpa. Well, let's see what Grandpa can help you out, guys, with. So, look, if you guys have just got into modding, this one's going to be a really good one for you because I'm going to be able to answer any of your questions. Don't jump off now just because you think, oh, well, um, thank you very much. <laughs> Story behind this hat, I'll tell you later. Um, yeah, yeah, it, it's a great chance for you guys to learn to know what to expect. And I'm going to give you some tips and pointers from my years of experience with uh, modding and being involved in communities and how to actually do things instead of talk about them. So have you got any questions? But, well, my hat, in case you're wondering, the hat is made of cactus. It comes from Puerto Escondido, which is uh, the Oaxaca down towards the south end of uh, Mexico. Belong to my best friend, Wayne, who unfortunately uh, left us to be with the Lord about three years ago. So the hat's a memory and uh, so many good memories to go along with it. And um, yeah, it's going to be fun. So excuse myself. I do have my last one out of my little sugar free ones. They're yummy, but I get a bit of a dry mouth. So I want to. Make sure you guys can hear what I'm saying. All right, guys. So what we're going to do today is it's going to be a relaxed kind of fun sort of layout. I'm going to run through some of the things um, that may, questions you might have, anything else like that. Um, <laughs> we Actually, that would be a good hat to model. I agree 100%. Grandma will love that. Grandma's, little grandma's actually in the other room right now as we speak playing Daisy. So she's playing on one of my uh, servers, um, which is just a churner with a few mods. If you Google Big Grandpa, you'll find it on there. And um, yeah, she's got a little place up north. If you ever want to jump in, she's friendly. All right, let's get into it. So to begin with, guys, the biggest question I get with people asking about modding, and the first question everyone starts with is, can I do it? Well, I believe anyone can do it. If a knucklehead like me can do it, and I'm not just saying that. You guys can actually do this as well. But there's a couple of prerequisites. First thing is, when you choose to do this, it's like committing to gym or committing to a marriage. You have to understand that good times and bad times, you're going to have to stick to this thing regardless. Now, it may be exciting at the beginning, like a marriage, but the mundane part will kick in. And this will test whether or not you've got the intestinal fortitude to stick this thing through, okay? 
So I need to get that clear right from the start because the biggest question I get when I go through my Discord, and by the way, guys, I want to say absolutely fantastic. The sheer amount of people that have joined, a lot of them are offline, they're probably going to watch this later, is huge. A great community, a good organized channel. I have uh, Flynn, who's one of my moderators, does a fantastic job. Also, shout out to Shane and uh Gunner Mooch has been asking a few questions and still plugging away at his project. Red Dragon, um, Richie, and uh, Bullseye as well, who's online. Great guys, uh, great gals as well. Really appreciate you guys and your support. What I appreciate more is that you guys are working together. So when we go on to this particular chat in any area, morning Flynn, hey guys, morning guys. You can see it's a very friendly environment. And we're all trying to learn the same kind of things. Uh, if you haven't visited the Discord channel, um, which I'm gathering you did, because that's might be how you got messaged or pinged, it's organized nicely into downloads, which Flynn just reorganized all my downloads. Files you may need, different subjects, terrain builder, terrain processor, bulldozer, offline, so on and so forth. Tutorials, which I'm adding to. And um, as you guys can see, we're trying to build this up and make it a real center of hub for you guys to help out. So that's the purpose of this is to help you guys out and make it simpler. So getting back to the point in question, if you have just started out, if you are just thinking about modding, obviously the questions come into mind, what do I need? What do I got to do? Well, you're going to need DayZ to begin with. You can't get around that. You're going to need DayZ tools, which is free. And to get Daisy tools, and I'll just do this quickly in case someone is new to the channel. All you want to do is you want to go into the uh, library and you can simply look down to your see Daisy tools. And you can install that and that will give you the tools. Now, having a toolbox full of tools doesn't mean you can build a house. <laughs> You've still got to get the equipment and put the work in to do all the rest of the work. But these are the tools that we generally use. If you're wondering what other tools I use, there is a bunch of them. Um, this thing I use here to organize my stuff, by the way, guys, if you haven't seen it, um, um, it's called Fences. It's a $10 program, but it allows you to just organize things and then make them disappear when you need them. And it sort of keeps me mostly organized, except for this section that says sort this stuff, which is better than the other word I could have used. So the stuff I use, Blender, um, for 3D modeling, don't worry if you don't know how to use Blender. I learned how to use that not so long ago and I'm building models and all. QGIS if you want to import a real life map. Um, something's gone wrong with my mouse, so it's clicking on everything. <laughs> oh, there we go. That looks, like a, that looks like a window glitch, that one there. So you're going to need QGIS. You're going to need uh, Blender if you want to do 3D models. You're going to need Photoshop or GIMP, depending on, on you know your particular you know, ideas or design. Um, there is a bunch of other programs I can recommend. Um, and just to sort of give you an idea, here's the, the things you do want to do. If you want to build a map, first of all, you're going to need an idea. And the best place to start is a real world place. I always recommend. So you're going to need QGIS and Daisy tools. You're going to need Daisy tools because inside of Daisy Tools, let me refresh that. There we go. Inside of Daisy Tools is Terrain Builder. And to get a quick glimpse at it, this is Daisy Tools. I don't expect you guys to understand if you're just starting out what it's all about, but these simply are a bunch of tools. This is your map section that you're going to build upon. These are different layers of your maps and your satellite images and textures, masks, and height. And you're gonna have objects, trees, bushes, roads, etc., and shapes, where you wanna define where objects are gonna be. You're gonna have uh, your library, which is all your parts you're going to use. And then there's gonna be some extra things as well, like your map frames. And what that does, don't worry if you don't follow all this at once, guys, I'm just giving you a quick overview. This does this defines the size of your map, how big the area is, how detailed the area is, and also 
all the different images that are going to make up your map, including a file which tells it what each texture is. So some of this is I'm going to be covering in future courses, but this is just an overview. So that's why we use Terrain Builder. Terrain Builder is the beginning of everything for all of us guys. Now, having said that, if you look at my map here, we can see that this map itself is an actual real world map. Okay. And it's taken from Uluru, which is the center of Australia, Ayers Rock. Um, and I've imported all this in. So if I did click on it, and it'll probably appear on the other screen. So I'm going to have to do a bit of shuffling over here to get that up for you. If I shuffle that across, this is always the fight I have with my multiple screens is making stuff do what I wanted to do. <laughs> Not quite where I wanted it. Um, but you can kind of see there, this is Uluru National Park. This is looking inside of, now this is what we call Bulldozer guys. If you guys haven't seen Bulldozer before, it's simply a program that we use um, to view and preview what our map will look like. So when we're looking at a map, which I've created, this is a small one. It's five kilometers by five kilometers. We can see that it's made up of several things. Now, the first thing obviously is the height map which we can see the height map there. Now, if I just turn on over here, my extra screen, I actually have an extra screen option over here, which will give me dual screens. And I can probably turn on my secondary screen over there. And I should always prepare this beforehand. Now, if I just windows it and drag it across, you guys will see it over there which is great, except I've got to windows it to get across. So you guys can see basically uh, the landscape. So there's a height map, which is this particular thing here that determines all of these heights. Fairly flat desert, Ayers Rock. By the way, that's the biggest monolith rock in the world. Its uh, height is actually as tall as the Eiffel Tower. And what protrudes out of that is only one third of the entire rock. So it's kind of like a land iceberg. There's an inter interesting point for you guys that might not have known about Ayers Rock. What goes under is a hell of a lot more. So that's a height map. The next thing we're going to have is um, we'll jump to our layers, which is our textures. So if we were to look and zoom in, you'll notice as we get towards the ground, we can see textures on the ground. Okay. So you can see there's a sand texture, grass texture. Uh, these look better in DayZ than they do in Terrain Builder just because the grass and the clutter doesn't appear. So you can see these textures. All of these are part of that particular layer, which is your, your layers one. And of course, the last one is your satellite map image. So if we were to zoom out, we can see as we zoom right out of the map further and further, what's taking over now is actually the real satellite image. Okay. So you're actually seeing a real satellite image. And then when I zoom in, you'll find the textures are now taking over as we get closer and closer, the textures start to take over. Okay. So that's a quick overview explanation of exactly what uh, how that process functions and what it does. So that's something that we definitely need. We need to have these things working before we can see it. So the first place everyone always, or I recommend everybody to start, is always begin to start with with your um, with your Daisy, your tools installed correctly. Um, <laughs> it's fighting me today. Um, and of course, if you're going to do a real life map, then you're going to need something like QGIS. Thanks very much for that. I'm glad. Hey, morning, fuzzy, another, another down under guy. So yeah, now that's that image that you liked is simply pulled straight from QGIS. Now I'm going to show you just quickly because this is a whole series of, of how things are done, but I don't want to go into too much detail right here. Um, by the way, Australia is almost 75% uh, or 70% well, 70 
desert and uninhabitable. In case you guys don't realize that the green bits around the edge is only where we mostly live. The rest of this is one of the driest places on earth. There's really nothing out there. So um, that's a good point. A bit of geology for you guys. If you're not familiar with Australia and its um, landscape, it's uh, I've driven all through this and it's really hot. So what happens here if we're looking at an area and we want to draw it in? And I happen to live in, I think, one of the most beautiful places in Australia, on the Gold Coast. And the Gold Coast is made up of uh, canals and high-rises, much like Miami in Florida. Hey, hey, what's happening? Good to see you here. Um, Sunny, good to see you here, brother. Right, so as we can see, here is the area that I happen to inhabit, and it's, it's a lovely little area. When we use QGIS and we want to grab information, all we're really doing is we're telling it to mark an area. It has to be saved before I can do that. Um, and then we're telling it to pull all the information from here. So it's going to pull the height map, which I said before, you need a height map. It's also going to pull your satellite map. And it will actually do the mask, which is some of your textures. And you can learn how to do those inside of here as well. So this is really uh, what we use if we're doing real life. Now, if you don't want to do a real life place, all you're going to do is get yourself a copy of L3DT, which you can get from their website for free. It's another program. And you can actually create in here a, um, a, a pretty good map to whatever dimensions you want. They give you limitations on the size on the standard version, but the pro version is now free. And you can tell it how, what your altitude, how steep you want the hills to be, the, the land to sea differences, how much noise, and if it's rough or smooth, or, you know, if it's rolling hills or cliffs, if you want really steep, lots of cliffs and how eroded. Once you've done all of this, this will actually also do the same thing for a fictitious map that you may be designing. Hey, Bizdara, what's happening? It's good to see you here. So as you can see, this is just running through and doing exactly what I said. So recap, you need DayZ, you need DayZ tools, and you're going to need either QGIS or L3DT if you're going to be building a map. So a lot of people use L3DT if they're building a fictitious map, but sometimes they'll pull a real map across and edit it in this. It's kind of up to you. Now, Having said that, I need to make this clear. It's like art. No two artists will have the same finish, but they may use the same brush. They may use the same ink. So it comes down to individual design. It's like in music. If it sounds right, it probably is. But there are rules we still have to kind of abide by when we're doing map design and so on and so forth. So keep that in mind. There are limitations of what you can do with DayZ. But I found I can do anything I want to do without a whole team of programmers and not having to learn Unreal Engine is a real benefit as well. So all it's doing here, it's literally creating a fictitious map for me. And when I'm finished, I technically, I won't demonstrate now, I could export this across, put it in to Rain Builder, and I can start putting down roads and putting down buildings and, and so on and so forth. So here is what our map looks like. And you can see the different colors represent different heights. Uh, I don't use this much anymore. I did, I did use it for a, a quite a while. And then I kind of got really into doing the real life maps that I just, I really didn't want to do it. Um, but there are times I've come back and done stuff for people inside of this and like just demonstrating this is just a demonstration guys to show you what we just generated see that landscape now i know it looks a bit sometimes rough in here it won't appear that way it won't look like minecraft when you're actually uh playing the game but you can kind of see here like it's built really steep hills and so on and so forth and now there's the water down the bottom there see that so it's showing you water plateau not a bad sort of that would be a very that's actually a very good map. It's got a nice little bay here and some hills and stuff like that. So, so that is what you can use L3DT for if you guys aren't familiar with using it. That's a way you don't have to use QGIS. Great for fictional, um, but it will also work uh, if you want to go ahead and, and also import stuff from a real map because we do that as well. You know, I've, I've used it many times. So these sections are water. These are all mountains. And that's... um. 
L3DT. A little thing for you guys um, with L3DT, if you have a look at um, L3DT and you go on to this awesome dude's website, you will know now um, he's having a problem with the registration. Uh, when was that? Oh, I'm not sure what the comments are. But if you want, you can download the L3D Professional here and register for a free 90-day trial and he'll provide it for you. Close for maintenance, but he's closed for site. Okay, yeah, you can still yeah, go free there. Use the free trial page. So just a point I was saying was um, it, the professional is free to use, guys. Difference between professional... There you go. I'm glad to have helped you out on that. Um, the professional version, just going to give you uh, a larger map area so you can scale up to 4096. So what have we covered in brief? We've covered a few of the tools that we're going to use. So obviously we've said terrain build is an essential, along with DayZ, your tools. Then you're going to have to find a way of getting your map in. So you're going to need either QGIS or L3DT. This is if you're building a custom map, guys. Keep that in mind. So... The next things you're going to probably need if you're going to build a map is you are probably going to need a copy of GIMP or Photoshop. GIMP is free. Photoshop, obviously, you have to purchase it. Both of them will do exactly the same thing. And they're very much similar in a lot of features. So if you're used to Photoshop, go ahead and use it. If you're used to GIMP or you're not used to either, go grab GIMP. It's free. You know, and I love the, the cover charge on that one. Um, they're your basics. Now what you're going to need is a P drive set up on your computer. And what is a P drive? No, it's not something when you urgently need to go to the bathroom. A P drive will look like this. It's not, you don't go out and buy a P drive. Okay. Listen to me. You don't go down and ask the guy down at the nearest computer shop, can you sell me a P drive? Okay. Um, a P drive is actually just a virtual drive, meaning if you've got a C drive, and you install Daisy tools, and then you will mount your uh, your drive. It will create something called a P drive, and the P drive will contain all of the data you're going to need to get Daisy editing running. So, for example, if I just jumped into Documents and I went into a Daisy Projects, believe it or not, in my Documents on the C, that is exactly the same folder that's in my P. Okay. So the computer just looks at it as a virtual drive when it wants to read information or write information. So really important guys, if you go into your documents and you see a folder called Daisy projects and you go, oh, I've already got that on my P drive. Let me just highlight all that and hit delete. Don't do that. I've had many mess messages from people saying they deleted their entire drive. Um, don't do that. It's a virtual drive. So your P drive will be set up. The next thing you're going to need is Makiro's. Now, on my Discord, uh, if you look under my download section, you should find up here Makiro's All in One. Makiro's All in One is a tool that's going to help you extract all of the unbinarized roads and a few other things. They're going to help you to edit. This is free, but if you do go to the Makiro's website, uh, which is just type in Makiro, Makiro Biotex, and it'll bring you to his website. There is the downloads, and you'll look through here. There's the installer for the all in one. If you install that and run that, it's going to set everything up for you that you need and give you a better cursor, a little thing majigo inside of Terrain Builder that helps you. It'll put a file. In your P drive, your P drive, it'll put it in the root of your P drive. It'll put a file which will also be called Map Legend. And it looks like that. And it's pretty useless as per se, but you require it when you're map building. More on that on some of the other tutorials. But as I said, I'm just trying to give you guys a rough idea. So that's the basics. From this point onwards, once you've set those up, which should only take you done correctly, it should not really take you more than a couple of hours to get all those things set up correctly, installed your Photoshop software. You potentially can start editing and building maps right from the get-go. But, of course, like all things in life, guys, there is something I'm going to teach you. And this is Grandpa's 
lesson tip of the day. So let's get open a Word document. And actually, I know a better way of doing this so you guys will absorb this because I really want you guys to understand what I'm trying to teach here. This, this is free information, guys. Okay. I can't refund you the admission because it was free. Okay. So just bear with me while I explain this. I know everybody wants to know everything in five seconds. This isn't something you can learn in five seconds. It's something that you're going to learn, but you're just going to need to take your time and, and learn through it. So what I'm doing here is I've got a free program called MindMeister. This is a mind mapping software. I'm not the most, I wouldn't say I'm overly exceptionally organized, but I have learned to use MindMeister simply based upon the fact that it simplifies everything I want to do. What is it? It lets you make a little map and put your ideas on there. Okay. Like this. Here's my idea. Here's the things that I'm going to need. Okay. By me having these references, I can then say, right, terrain builder, object builder, QGIS. These are the things I think I'm going to need. Oh, I'm going to need Photoshop as well. Okay. So you can continue to add things to it like Photoshop. Right. And it's just keeping things organized. You can move them wherever you like them. So I use MindMeister just because it's a great way of mapping out your ideas and getting organized. When you get really into it, you can really start to keep things clean and tidy. So anyway, enough of that. So here we are, terrain builder. Here's our map. So for the sake of it, let's call this map. Okay. Terrain builder is a must. So we're going to really call this Daisy Tools, which is important right and from daisy tools oops there over to there we're gonna have we're gonna need terrain builder and ask me why it's black and white and shouldn't be but anyway change it to another color terrain builder terrain builder daisy tools we need to install terrain builder photoshop qgis don't worry about object builder for the moment let's get rid of that you're going to need to learn how to use terrain builder so first step Learn. I don't know why it keeps doing it as a dark color, but let me see if I can change it. No, learn. Uh, change it. Learn tools. So the first thing, these are the steps that I always break everything down in. First step, learn the tools. That's the first thing we'll learn. The second thing, learn how to make the text stay default. Learn technique. Probably misspelled, but I'm typing quickly. So, learn technique. And the last thing that I tell everybody is this, is application. Bear with me. If you're with me in this so far and you're listening, you probably wonder, I'm getting, is he getting to a point? Trust me, it's not old age digging in. This makes a hell of a lot of sense. So, if you're starting out anything to do with Daisy tools, I don't care whether it's terrain builder, object builder, or, or anything, workbench, First thing is to understand the tools. Understand what am I using? How does it work? Right? If you understand all the tools, if you open up um, Daisy Tools and you know exactly what each button does, if you understand what these things do in here, you can use them. You can learn, oh, how can I how can I lower the ground here inside of here? How can I put multiple objects? How can I change all those trees, those trees, to other trees? with clicking one button. You'll learn a little bit as you go, but all you need to do is take your time and learn it. So my first step is, here it is, learn the tools. The second one is learn the technique. Once you've learned how to use the tools, toy with it. Get on your map and have a play with things. Learn what things do. You know, sit there with like, I've got a sample map. Download the Utes, Utes map. You can find the Utes map on the Daisy samples. Toy with theirs, grab objects. You know, click on them, say, oh, what is in here? What's in there? Parts. What are they? I don't know. They, I'm going to put one down here. What does that do? I don't know. I'll open up my map and have a look. So you open up your map and lo and behold, you find out that's a road. And you go, okay, how do I delete it? Well, click around, have a bit of fun. What I'm saying is explore and enjoy this, guys, because it is part of the process. So learn your tools, learn your technique. And the last thing is the application. When you've covered these two First steps, you've learnt your tools and your technique. You don't have to know everything. You just have to understand the basics. Then sit there and apply them. Sit there and mess with a sample map. Take, take the Utes map. If you're looking for it, 
just search daisy samples it is hard to find I know because it's not in an obvious place I spelt samples wrong go to daisy samples and you will find in here uh, there's a test terrain you can literally click the green button download it will give you all of these samples but the one you're focusing on is your test terrain here which will contain a file that when you open it up um, you can actually run it inside of uh, terrain builder and toy with it I hope that's making sense guys so that's why I said the three rules I stand by to I've learned everything myself I only the other day learned how to do uh, trees and no one taught me no one showed me there was little information so I literally had to do what I'm doing I learned the tools I learned the technique and I just applied them all three of these things are going to take patience and I'm sorry I know people sometimes want it in five minutes if you want to learn this, it is going to take you a bit of time. So keep that in mind. These three rules, tools, technique, and application, stick by those. Do I understand the tools? Well, toy with them. Do I understand the technique? How, how do I use them, right? And, try, and once you get a feel for that, practice applying them. Grab a bridge, bring it in. How do I make the bridge sit level? How do I turn it? How do I rotate it? Well, I don't know. How do I find that out? Well, I go into Google and I type bulldozer with one L. And I go uh, controls Daisy and I search and I come up with this page at the top. And I go, okay, well, how do I control this bulldozer? Well, look, what are all these? Well, here it is. If I want to go fast, I press U. If you know, I want to go slow, I press J. If I want to look around, I press the numbers. See, these are the things that you will learn as you go. And I will teach these in. In future classes as well but i'm just giving you an oversight i don't want to get bogged down if there's any questions you guys want to fire anything off at me while i'm teaching this please let me know because i'm happy to even answer your questions even if you think it's separate to this so as i said they're the main aspects that you're going to have to focus on later on you might want to build models you'll need blender um, you may want to sit there and do what i did and learn things like this which is object builder now, if I turn on my second screen over here and I zippy dip boot that one up there, um, you'll see what I've been working on, um, a palm tree. And here's just a quick sample, and I'm not going to complicate this. See how the leaves are blowing? Okay, you can see the leaves are blowing. Um, I had to learn how to do that. That's the high resolution. And as you move further away, the resolution changes so it doesn't bog down your processor. And the last resolution is called a billboard, which from a distance, from a long, long distance away, still re resembles a tree, which you'll notice when you look in DayZ, you see these funny, almost two-dimensional things. That's, they're called billboards. How did I learn these? No one taught me. I literally just toyed with it and Googled it until I figured it out. But I'm going to save you guys the hassle by teaching you a lot of this stuff. This program is called Object Builder. It is a... 3D design program suited for building models that will function inside of DayZ, whether that be a animal, a vegetable, <laughs> a mineral, or a building. It doesn't really matter. This is the program that will help you to create it. Now, for some of you guys are looking at this going, dude, Ukrainian must be huge. How does it fit in a hat? Trust me, my head's big, but it's just not chock full of brains. It it was just a process of me toying and watching whatever I could find, which is very limited information. I am going to explain this too, so don't worry if you're starting out. I will be teaching all this. These things made no sense to me until I started toying with them. So I started clicking on things and what does this do and and what does that do and you know and then suddenly I was like oh that's pretty cool. Same process. What are these things? Well, I learned what these are. They're lods called look level of dist uh, level of <laughs> distance something like that. Anyway, it's each time you get further away from an object or if you run into an object or if you chop down an object, all these tell the object what it is. It may be, say, may be something you don't want to learn. That's fine. But in this case, I am building some 3D models and I've actually built one of the ones I'm really, really proud of is um, my gum tree because being an Aussie, 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 oi, 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 um, we... Um, we have a lot of gum trees because I live amongst the home of the gum trees. Let's close that one down as it's going to bite me. There we go. And you'll see 
um, instead of what I've designed, uh, I ain't no genius. I ain't that smart, but I can lift heavy things. But you can see, look, the leaves move and everything. And that was quite an accomplishment for me. Um, and by some means, I'd have to say the model probably exceeds uh, some of the DayZ ones, which I was quite pleased with. But I wouldn't say I'm a genius at this. Um, you can tell me that, and it definitely inflates my ego. So by all means, compliment me as much as you can. I need it as I get older. So as you guys can see, that is um, one of the tools you may want to consider when you're talking about using the tools that are provided via Daisy Tools. That is probably one of the tools that you may want to consider in the future. If you're starting, stick to your terrain builder. Hi, Grandpa. Did you know if we can use Armor 3 objects to build a map for DayZ? Okay. Um, Armor 3. Armor 3 objects to build a map for DayZ. Simple answer, no. Uh, why? Illegality. You cannot port um, any Armor 3 objects uh, from them to DayZ. But. There's a caveat, you can port across any of the Armour 2 objects, and if you have a copy of, and I'll have to turn my little camera thing over there, the second one, if you have a copy of Stalker on disk, you can, from all my knowledge, port across uh, any of the objects in the Stalker map, believe it or not. Um, Another thing that I just learnt the other day. So, so that's an important little fact for you guys out there. Um, no, you can't. You legally cannot do it. And uh, the one who's the genius on that is probably Richie. Richie's quite renowned with his knowledge of this field. He's been doing it a long time. And Shane, um, been around us for a long time. So the main one you're probably going to use to build a map will be Terrain Builder. Object Builder, if you're going to build objects, modify objects. Uh, and I do recommend down the track, if you're starting out, ignore Object Builder. Please don't go near this. Stick with Terrain Builder. And just pull the objects in from DayZ. So you're welcome. Um, done the Ghost, you're welcome. You can just sort of let you know that. Um, the next one is Terrain Processor. And a lot of you guys are going, what is Terrain Processor? Terrain Processor is pretty cool. What it does, it will take... It will actually take shape files. Now, what is a shape file? Let's say you've got a road. I've got a road that runs around Ayers Rock, like this. Okay. Now, I can bring that shape from Terrain Builder into here, tell it what objects I want. Sorry, I've got to update, <laughs> rechange my version of Terrain Processor. So it's not a good example, but it's normal little things across here. I can tell it what road pieces I want to put down, what distance, click OK, and Terrain Processor is going to drop all the roads down without me putting them down one by one. It'll do other things. It will also process things like trees, um, bushes. It's going to process a bunch of different things that when you look at Terrain Builder, you'll notice that in our objects, I've got only a few on this test one, bushes, roads, access road, trees, so on and so forth. And the little squares all represent uh, what those are. Um, so you can kind of see all the squares. Um, so all of those I could bring in via shapes. So in very simple terms, I could just create a shape called tree, tree layer, like such. And then what I could do is I could draw a polygon Polygon is basically a shape with multiple sides and points, and that is a polygon. So I could now take that. I could go up and export that shape, which I won't show you in detail here, but I can export that shape. And then I could come back over into Terrain Processor, open it up, and then I could just go in and then import that particular shape file which in our case was a circle. So for a better example, probably the loop road, I could import it in here and then tell it what objects I want to appear inside that shape and even how many of each object or how random and so on and so forth. So that's a little kind of a basic one on Terrain Processor. Uh, Add-on Builder. This is an important part of the lesson, you guys. Add-on Builder. Should you use it? Well, 
My answer is no. Why? First of all, add-on is broken in mine. No matter what I do, I can't fix it. And there's a better tool out there, which I told you before was called Makiros. And Makiros has a, uh, an item called PBO Project, which will build your items ready to play in the game. That's in simple terms. I'm trying to simplify this down for you guys. So uh, Makiros is simply going to simplify. It, it's going to take whatever you've built. Let's say it's your map. Let's say it's an object or a, an animal or a car. It's going to compact it down and it's going to make it a file that DayZ can then import because we all know when we open DayZ, it says to mount your PBOs. That's what they are. So that's, I don't recommend add-on builder and here's my reason but why. Too many times I've used add-on builder, it won't show the errors and it'll seem to run, but then when you put it on a server, you'll have issues or things don't tell you what's wrong or the textures aren't right. Mikiro's, whenever you pack an object, like my palm trees, and you hit crunch, it's taking all of that, it's binarizing it, playing hallelujah over here. And then what it's done is it's created an output log which is going to tell me everything that is done. Don't worry about what this says if you don't understand this. Um, there's all the trees it's compacted. It's going to tell me if there's any errors or anything that could be an issue. You don't really get that with add-on breaker, I mean builder. So that's why I often say to people, please, if you can avoid it, don't use add-on builder. Um, I just find it better. So that's that. Uh, the last thing you might want to consider later on, unless you're skilled in it, and I know there's a few guys listening that are probably pretty skilled in it, using things like Blender um, to go ahead and build your own models, um, which is kind of fun. I think I built uh, I built a, um, a full-scale model of the movie set uh, Breakfast Club. Uh, I haven't textured it, but as you can see, that's uh, the full building all I had to work from was those two-dimensional plans, and I, I'm going to be honest with you guys, I only really learned how to use Blender properly about a year ago, and, you know, for a knucklehead like me to work this out, I was kind of happy. So, you know, this is going to be a building which will be all textured and so on and so forth. So that's Blender. There is some tools which also you can install which allow you to export to Armor, which is also saving it for for Object Builder and DayZ. So something else you might in the future want to be looking at or you may not know about, this is a handy add-on to Blender. If you're looking at learning Blender in any way and you're not familiar with it, start at the only place I recommend, and that is Game Dev. I get no kickbacks from these guys, by the way. So Game Dev... Uh tv or something i think the game dev.net or game dev tv there it is yep these guys here have a great course i think i've even got a bloody link on my website which gets you the normal course for next to nothing um they always got specials like learn all these things 69 dollars. that's actually cheap um but their courses are phenomenal this is the one i've got i've got it on my discord where it's normally 195 i think you get it for 20 dollars. so uh, i don't get any kickbacks just letting you know but this course, probably the best course, if you've done Blender and you think you know it all, uh, Rick Davison is probably the greatest teacher I've ever had in my life. Um, phenomenal course, really easy to follow, uh, 35 hours. The getting started is two hours. Two hours and you'll be starting to use it, and then it breaks down each one. Now, you can sit here and just watch these. Literally, I thought, oh, they've made a mistake, and I watched and watched and watched. I was like hang on, they're not charging me. And then I suddenly realized what had happened was, I think I got all the way halfway through and then they said, now if you want the course, you can pay for it. So I'd learned so much information. I went, bugger it. It's going to cost me like $10 or something. So $20, I think. So anyway, that's from gamedev.tv, you guys. If you haven't seen it, I recommend checking that out. It's a real ripper of a course. Uh, they got some great stuff on that. So that's the one I recommend. Get yourself into that if you're looking at learning Blender. Um... Other things that you may want to learn later on, um, there are some different tools that we can use. Um, I have used a bit of Unreal Engine. I don't recommend getting into that as a solo, unless you're really that into gaming, you want to build your own total game from scratch. That's a big learning curve. I'm just letting you guys know. It's it's a huge learning curve learning, learning that one. And here's the thing. 
if you're going to learn how to uh, mod, you want probably want to learn it on your own time. So doing your own map, I recommend starting with a small map. Take a, a very small map like you can see I've got here and just toying with it and building up your own little game that you can play online. Because the way you get good at these things is just by practicing them over and over again. So that's probably my best tips. Now, if there's any questions you want to fire at me at this point, anything I'm going to show you or demonstrate something that you may think isn't really part of the beginners, but you want me to say, help you on it or advise, shoot me through a message. I'm happy to help you guys out. Um, I know we're streaming via Twitch and we're streaming via YouTube and there's usually a, probably at a 10 second delay, but if you guys feel you need any questions, feel free to ask me. Let me demonstrate or let me show you where I am with the biggest map of all, which has been a year and a half's worth of work, which is known as Rosebud. Um, this is the thing that I've been working on. So it's a huge map. It's functioning beautifully. I've got it on my test server and it's only in alpha, so I haven't released it for anyone else yet. Uh, but it's an Aussie map based upon a real place and uh, set in the 80s. So we got everything from the 80s, from the music to the cars, to the fashion, to the whole lot. So it's going to be a real retro sort of bit of fun and nostalgia. Um, ignore all those extra um, details that I've, I used two maps, one with the houses and the one I've deleted it from. But you can kind of see everywhere these funny little gray squares are, they're all trees. Okay, and um, I'll teach you how to put trees down accurately without having... Feel free to ask one, Sonny. Um, how to put trees down dead accurate. So if we have a look, if we have a look, say, for example, if I go in here and I show you one of my trees, and we look at my objects. Now, if I turn off that, you can see all those trees disappear. See that? Now, normally, the way of doing it in DayZ is to drop down individual trees on a map that big. Expect another six months of putting trees down. The process I'm going to teach you guys will automatically drop trees down so accurately, you're barely going to have to even correct a tree. It's ridiculously accurate. So you, you're not going to be able to tell much of the difference from the real world to this one. So um, so there's my map, and you can see there's roads and there's trees. Um, there's lots of hills. There's beautiful beach. Um, nice sort of bluey green water. Um, so this is this is something I've been working on for quite a while, and I've had to redevelop it a few times. It's got a lovely big lake up here as well, called Devil's Bend Reservoir, and um, yeah, this is this is the kind of thing you can achieve. So I really set out to build one map, and then I realised I end up helping people build about fifty maps. But in the process of helping everybody else, I suddenly learnt so much more. And that information I've learned, I'm giving back to you guys. So if you're still watching. I really appreciate it because it's free information. And um, let's face it, normally they say there's no free lunches, but in this case, there is. You're getting it for free. So that's the fundamentals of building a map. Now, we need to discuss something else, which is important as well. Where do we go when it comes to learning how to do all this and how long you know how long is it going to take me to build a map how long okay the question i get the most people say can you do this can you have it done in a week that's a hard question to answer the first thing you need to know is how much time am i am i going to allocate to this am i willing to take six months okay question you want to get fit you want to lose you know 20 pounds you know 10 kilos or whatever are you willing to sacrifice four weeks, eight weeks, 16 weeks, six months, a year, two years? Well, I can tell you now, the more you sacrifice, the more beneficial it's going to be for you in the long run to be able to achieve your goal. And this is no different to achieving anything else. If you're willing to sacrifice, you're willing to put in the effort, then obviously you're going to get the results. But I would say this one thing, and I emphasize it the most. Don't go into this thinking, I'm going to do this in three months. I'm going to show everybody. You may have something that functions in less than a day. 
but to complete a map, to put in the polish, to finish it, and get all those things done, it takes time. But if you get addicted to it, it's like doing a jigsaw puzzle or anything. Once you get addicted, you're fine. You'll keep doing it. And it becomes a hobby that you tend to get so enthralled with, you don't want to stop. Trust me, coming from someone who knows a lot about that. So I would often recommend people be committed to what you're doing. Say, I want to make this decision. I'll make this choice. I want to get in shape. I want to build a map. I'm going to allocate six months to see where I am. Or I'm going to have three months. I'm just going to sacrifice three months. And if I can't figure it out in three months, let me see where I am in three months. That's the attitude you need to come in with. Because knowledge builds upon knowledge. The things that people uh, sometimes think, how the hell do you learn that? I'm no different than you. I struggled. I banged my head against the wall. I had to learn so much stuff. Um, I'm making up, I think it will take one year, a good time frame. There's a good example. See, 12 months is realistic. If if I say to someone when I was training and, and bodybuilding, I used to teach people how to train. I say, how long does it take to compete? I said, well, I wanted to compete when I was 14. That's when I had the first desire, but I never stepped on the stage till I was 39. But I did it. And I don't say that to brag. I say it just meant enough that I didn't care how long it took. And that's a very hard thing to do. But I realized the same thing with this, sacrificing a year, um, saying that's what I'm going to do. I'm committed to this. Next thing, get yourself a pile of these sticky notes, just like this, right? Got one sticking right on the bottom of my screen in the positive. Gum, trees, finished. I haven't finished it. But when I look at it, it's stuck on the bottom of my screen. It says gum trees finished. It reminds me, that's the first thing I'm going to do today. Three of those. I got them sitting on my board over here that all say uh, blackberries finished, ferns finished, clutter finished, create video tutorial, uh, set up the local server, do the guttering on the house. Course, QGIS, French. Voilà, je parle en français. So I'm, I know what to look at. When I come up in the morning, I go, okay, what am I doing? And I go, right, I'm going to do course QGIS in French and I'll stick it on the screen I'll do it good little habit to get in guys I mean these are little tips um you're welcome mate I'm glad you're learning from this these little tips may seem oh he's doing sticking oh he's stupid I just want to build a map oh sure but I tell you what the little methods like that I mean when you come in and you sit at the front of the computer you know wasting time email and TikTok and swipe and left gum trees finished in a positive not do gum trees, gum trees finished. So when I look at it, it says gum trees finished, I'm thinking finished. And that's what I want to see by the end of the day. I want to see that piece of paper and my little basketball hoop like this that sits over my rubbish bin, trash can, so that at the end of the day, I can say gum trees finished, crumple, toss. Okay? That's what I do. And that's what I'm saying. If you can learn these little techniques of discipline yourself to do it every day, it's completely achievable. So here's another thing. We live in a community where there's very little information and the information that I share with you guys and that my great awesome community shares is free. If you have a question about something, you're not sure about something, simply join up with a, my Discord channel, ask a question. I've got English, French, Russian, um, people are showing what work they've done. They're sharing some of their great results. This guy did Rolexes and smoke gum trees and, you know, Ryan Reynolds. But I'm saying, this is a chance for you to be part of the community. So if you're, if you're helping out, that's one way of learning. Keep in mind when you ask a question, don't demand. Just say, would anybody know how to do this or whatever else? Ask it in a very clear sense. Don't type in gibberish, just type... You know, I need to know how to, so on and so forth. So that's another point. The other thing as well is this. Um, I'll switch over for you guys so you can see it. When you're looking for information, and this is a handy, handy tip, guys. When you say, Daisy, how to mod, you're going to get a lot of these BI community sites. Now, they do contain some information. They're exceptionally limited. Okay. I'm just letting you guys know. Um, they're really, really limited on the amount of information you got. And sometimes it doesn't really make a lot of sense, but don't 
you know, always go and check that. Here's another tip. Do this. Armor. Modding. And look at armor modding. And you're going to find stuff on here from armor, which is cross-referenced. You can use some of these techniques. So there's another good tip in finding information. See, there's some videos here. They're not all going to apply, guys. You'll know straight away because the tools that we use were different and some of the ones we use are different. So, for example, I did armor, armor plants, vegetation, and I couldn't find anything on DayZ. That's my get up and take a break. And I found an armor vegetation site. Do not worry if this doesn't make any sense. I'm just showing you ways of finding information. This gave me the breakdown of what's required or what little, you know, numbers should be included. This bit of information, I had to learn this. Now, it may be not something you're getting into, but as an example, looking under armor stuff, um, going to obviously what I'm building here, which is the DZ Academy. We're about, oh guys, we're about to do an upgrade on the website shortly. I've just had a chat with someone and we're going to do a full overhaul of the website. Um, and we're going to add some some new content to it and everything else. But the DZ Academy, it's free to join. Uh, come on, click here. Uh, you'll send a personal message to me and I will sign you up. It's free. There's some courses on here. Uh, and I've got more courses coming out as well soon. So um, come along, check that out. Um, this is going to be the center of where I can get everything. Introduction to modding, start here. If you haven't modded, that's the place you want to begin. Get onto this one here because this is the one that'll teach you a little bit about modding. Now, let's get on to a important subject. Okie dokie. Let's just get this one right. I think this image says everything. Okay, I wish I get a full size. Um, scammers. Scammers, 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 scammers. Why am I telling you this? More and more times I get personal message or direct message, as you guys like to say, about these people here that are ripping people off. Okay? So be very, very careful. If someone um, comes to you and says, I can do that for you. I can show you how to do that. And then they offer you, um, yeah, I'll do that. It'll only cost you X amount. Be questionable about who they are and what they're offering. That's all I'm saying. I've heard too many people get bitten. Okay. If their name rhymes with scam time, run. If that means nothing yet, when you get burnt, you're going to know exactly what I was just saying. Be careful, guys out there about people who are ripping other people off inside of, of the modding community. Because this is a huge problem, more than you can imagine. And one of my friends got scammed. I think it was close to 1,500 US dollars. And the person held him ransom to him wouldn't even release the map. So, and on the same side of it, guys, if you're, if you're producing something, you're building something inside of Daisy, be aware that there are people that are going to come along and try to rip you off as well. You know, you may go and create a, a really good mod or a map and suddenly someone downloads it and tries to unpack it and then upload it on their server and then, you know, you got to go through all the DLC stuff with Bohemian. So just be aware, my opinion, if the person is trustworthy and has proven it has good references from other people, fine. But I've found them few and far apart. Most people are out to rip other people off. So just... I'm trying to give you guys information here that's going to help you guys out to save you headaches and time and money. So if you're sitting there going, I just want to build a map, good, that's fine. What I'm offering you here is all the experience that I've had through years. I've been doing this a long time in one form or another. And I started back really in the late 80s and did modding through the 90s. And, and I'm just saying the communities back then seemed to be a bit more helpful than they were today. Um... People seem to share information more, but I've noticed there's less uh, sharing of information. Now, the recept exception with that is, and I, I'm very proud of my community, is that every time I jump on every single day onto my um, chat, I always find people 
helping each other out. Now, I think I helped out Dino recently, Dino Bino's. Uh, Dino's helped me, and then Dino's wanted to build um, larger elephants. And I found a method Ever where he took his elephants and he built bigger elephants. And I shared that information, and then someone else shared some of the leads to get that to work. So what I'm saying is we're trying to help each other out, guys. So if you can help someone, help them out. Take your time. So be aware of the scammers. Be cautious if someone offers to do something for you. Um, and by all means, give more than you take, because that's really what our whole community is about. about. So um, that's really the greatest part I can, I can impart upon you guys. Now, if you are trying and struggling to get yourself set up, um, by all means, come to the tutorials. Uh, check out this one here, which is the introduction, which will explain the history of modding, the pros and cons. The next one is getting started, which will explain everything from your Daisy tools to your bulldozer setup, Nikiro's PBO project setup, mod folder, offline mode setup, some tips and a summary. Now, I put literally hundreds of hours in doing clean tutorials for you guys to make it simple. So this is free, not charging a cent. All you got to do is PM me, and if you haven't got a uh, DZ Academy um, account, I'll set one up for you for free, which will get you access to this. So that's probably the best recommendations I can offer you guys in the regards to getting started and learning in the community. Now, if there's anyone out there who wants to ask any questions, feel free to fire away. I will be getting a, uh, a live... Um, a class going soon where we're going to have a live stream with students so whatever level you're at beginner intermediate advanced uh, you'll be able to jump on and we'll be able to just help each other out through a live stream and, and share information and so on and so forth so I'm excited about doing that I got a lot of things on the horizon and a lot of this is work that I'm doing as one person and um, you know it helps when you guys create people like Flynn and Junior Mafia, who came on as learning and sharing information, Gunnar Mooch, who I've known for a while as well, you know, some new people here as well, um, asking questions. Uh, and he actually answered his own question. <laughs> uh, can you cut and paste objects from one layer to another without slightly moving the objects? Um, yes, you can. You can do it. Um, there are ways of doing that uh, by selection. I'll answer him shortly but that. So that's that. That sort of give you guys sort of a rough overview of what to expect when it comes to mapping and modding inside of DayZ. So uh, if you have any questions, if there's anything in particular that you are not familiar with or things you're not sure of, um, I will fire over to those now if anyone wants to um, to ask me any questions. I may jump into, let's have a look. I think we haven't tried this, so we might as well try it as a bit of a test run on this. I might jump into my Daisy podcast uh, channel. Um, and I should be connected. Yes, I am connected into my Daisy podcast channel. If anyone has any questions and wants to jump into the Daisy podcast uh, channel on my Discord, I think we should find that'll work. And um, I'll be able to have a, a live chat to you and answer any of your questions as well. Uh, if there's anything at all. And some of the things I've learned recently, which I will share with you guys, uh, because as you know, when grandpa disappears into the shed and you hear all that banging and clanging, that's grandpa tinkering away. Okay. So that's what I do. I go in there and I just tinker away at things until I can figure them out and work out what they are. There's a great, great tool, which I will do a full, full tutorial on called uh, Flora and S Flora. And it will let you lay down textures, uh, sorry, lay down plants and fauna and flora very, very quickly. Uh, and if I have shared my screen, which I believe I have, which let me just check, I'm all over the place that you can see. So if you have a look here, you can see here is a map and using this tool here, you can automatically generate placement of your trees. And when you're done, you can then tell it 
to avoid areas that you don't want trees. You can change the density of the forest to how dense you want it um, or how sparse and what type of trees. And when you're done, you can then um, actually populate your entire map in just a few clicks. You can tell it to save all that, export all those trees across and voila, you'll have trees only in the areas that you want them. So that's a really cool principle that I do want to get into some detail about explaining to you guys as well, because I'm sure there's some people out there that are struggling with making their maps look realistic. So that will be in one of my upcoming tutorials as well, um, where we'll do a workshop and I will run through the process of using S Blora, which was such a wonder to learn because um, it was quite easy. And the person who pointed me to it was one of the people in my Russian channels. Thank goodness for Google Translate. Um, I like to build a city with a subway system. Um, here we go. A couple of questions here. Uh, okay. From Velovich 101. I'm guessing that would be Eastern European or Russian. Hey, bro, please show me on the stream how to port objects from the game Stalker to the game DayZ. Alrighty. Well, I would, but I have one problem at the moment, and that is that I don't have a DVD ROM drive to get them off there. I've got to organize my other laptop, put them in that, transfer them across. In simple terms, it would be no more complicated than pulling the files off there, the P3D files over there and exporting them into Object Builder. It's a better of my knowledge. But when I do that, I will demonstrate for you exactly how to do that because I want to do that in um, with some of the Stalker buildings as well. Uh, so yeah, remind me of that next time and I'll make sure I've got my DVD ROM hooked up because you buy a brand new computer and they don't give you a DVD ROM. Who would have thought? Who would have thunk? All right. Um, I'd like to build a city with a subway system. That's a good question. You want to build a city with a subway system. How would you do that? Well, the way you would do that is by illusion. So you first of all got to create, first of all, you can't build technically tunnels underground, but you can build tunnels underground. So it sounds like I just contradicted myself, but it is actually possible. So what you need to do to build a, a uh, underground terrain is pretty basic in principle. Let me see if I can demonstrate here using um, my, uh, where is it, image editor. Where is it? Um, use Google Paint. Let's, let's go old school here, shall we? Okay. It will take a while for my little thing there to disappear, but that's okay. Use this in about a century. Um, so obviously when you're looking at Daisy, you might have a terrain that looks like this. So... Uh, actually, I better do this just for safety's sake. Uh, there is a, a level called sea level, which will make the blue line represent sea level, so you guys can understand. Blue is sea level. Black is your ground level. Now, depending on your terrain, you might have a terrain that's sort of undulating, or you might have a terrain that's just dead flat. It doesn't really matter. Zero. Zero is your uh, water level. You cannot... You don't want to go much below there because if you do, everything's going to be underwater. So first thing is make sure wherever you're building your particular uh, train track is still above the zero mark, right? You still want it above above that particular mark of zero. So in this example, um, let's get rid of those for a sec. We'll do an example of what I'm trying to explain. So if we were to look at our terrain side on, it might look like this. But what you want is, in fact, a tunnel and some land above it, like such. Okay? So, this can't be done in the normal sense. So, what you would do is this. You would simply figure out which brush I'm, I'm not using. <laughs> Select. Where's my free brush? Okay. So, what you would do is this. Where your terrain is you would literally just drop out where you want the tunnel to be like that. So that's your tunnel. 
Now you can then put a 3D model inside of here that has a subway tunnel. So if you've got one of those cool um, subway tunnels models, that can be dropped straight in here. Now for all intensive purposes, if you ever look at a model, some models are only single sided, which means looking through this, this side here, that's gonna be solid. Looking back this way, that model will be transparent because it doesn't need a surface on the opposite side. So, hey, did someone just jump in? That's right. So you can drop your model in here and from inside, you're not gonna see any of this. So let's say this is our subway and our train tracks. All you need to do now is on your surface, create a plane and then make that a, a texture like grass. So when you're looking from the top view down, this, for all purposes, is going to look just like the ground, but hidden under this one little lid, call it a lid, shall we? That is going to be your tunnel. Now, it doesn't matter with all the gaps and spaces inside this tunnel, you're never going to see anything outside of that. And just a really good, now that you got me thinking of that, I want to show you something really cool. If you guys haven't seen it, if you haven't seen on 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 Steam Unreal, they have some of the nicest tunnels and stuff. And for inspiration, if you're looking at it, you can install Unreal for free if you really want to go to the trouble. Uh, but you should see some of the some of the models that the inspiration they'll give you, because these are phenomenal. You can buy a lot of models from other places, but you'll see like this. Uh, where is it? There it is. And we'll just type subway. I think it's actually modular. So building a subway, you want it to be, um, yeah, you're welcome. Um, so if I show you these things, and some of you guys are gonna need a box of tissues once you watch this. Um, this is a modular tunnel here. So although it looks like a bunch of different tunnels, they're only really a bunch of models that are clicked together modular. Do you get the, the principle of what I'm saying? So each one of these things over here can be put together to create this illusion. You're repeating the same model. So that will give you something extreme. If you were going down that avenue, you could do this very doable in DayZ. That's, that's well within the realms, realms of possibility. And the term we usually look for when we're looking for this stuff is always modular. So you're always looking for modular stuff because Modular just really mean that you can take um, one piece and connect it together like Legos. Legos are modular. modular. So if we're looking at a modular hotel or a modular bunker, you can kind of see that these models are really just, in essence, just pieces um, joined together to make one bigger Lego block. That's all they are. So, so that's what you want to keep in mind when you're doing these things. Build a modular not just a whole tunnel, you know, and then you can stick them together, just like road pieces. You can join them together, so on and so forth. So if you're looking for models, obviously there's some great sites out there, um, you know, like um, Turbo Squid has a lot of models on it. Um, you can you can look up Subway on there and see what they've got. And they'll probably have a bunch of different uh, things like this. See, so there's one way to, to look at it as well. But there's plenty of places you can find models uh, or you can make them yourself if you really want to go to the trouble of learning Blender and doing it all from scratch. Depends on your time and what you're happy doing. So that should answer that question um, regarding that and building a subway. Uh, I am in the process of building an underground place as well. So I kind of know about this principle and uh, a couple of my dear friends, um, Lee Ritchie and Shane and Flynn, those guys are all building underground, you know, certain things for their own maps here and there. So that's a principle that we use. Um, it's not Essica, it's um, it's one of the other ones, Essica and Namalska. One, no, not Namalska, it's the other one. It has the same principle. The only problem they made is when they put the lid on top of that bunker, if you drive a vehicle onto it, it gets stuck. Uh, there's a way to fix that. I figured that out, but keep that in mind. That will explain pretty well the process of building underground bunkers and so on and so forth. Um, I will touch on this for you guys out there that haven't seen it before. Map frames. I need to make this really, really clear. 
if you guys haven't built a map and you come come into doing map frames, check out the Pennyworth GitHub map frame information. It will explain what it is. Before we start, a lot of you guys are Imperial. We're a metric. One centimeter, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten centimeters. How many meters in a kilometer? Hundred. Okay, we work in whole numbers of 10 now. If I say how many yards in a mile, you'll sit there and scratch your head. Um, looking in a socket, 5 mil, 10 mil, 20 mil, 15 mil, 3, 8, 3, 16, 9, 15. It gets really confusing. So when you're doing maps and cell sizes, keep in mind they're doing it in metric. It's only working in numbers of 10, okay? Whole numbers of 10. So when you look at a map that is 40960, m meters it's really just four it's just 40 kilometers okay because there's how many meters how many meters in a kilometer how many meters in a kilometer 100 okay let me check that okay google how many meters in a kilometer one kilometer is equal to 1000 meters 1000 meters my mistake <laughs> told you i was mad at mathematically illiterate so that's why you get the 40960 so Always remember that we're working in whole numbers. I had a brain fart with that one. But we're working in tens. So whenever guys come up and do a map and they say to me, oh, yeah, um, and this you may come across if you're doing it or you're starting out, you're going to see this one the most of anything that I ever get said. People do this. <clears throat> they go into the map frame and they go, oh, I want to make my map size uh, 4096. Okay. They confuse this number, the grid size, with the meters. Okay. It's the biggest mistake you'll ever make. Grid size is how much detail. And I'm going to show you this quickly because it's a very good learning. 10 meter cell size on a landscape gives you this kind of detail. See? So we can see for each meter, each length, we can see how blocky it is. If we get into a two meter cell size, we can see every two meters, we get more detail, more plots. So what this is doing, in fact, is every 10 meters, zero to 10, it's putting a plot, a point, then 10 meters, a point, 10 meters, a point. Two meters is going plotter here, two meters, four meters, six, and you get the point. So you can see the difference. That's it, a thousand. Sorry, I was having a brain fart, but I am mathematically illiterate. So, <laughs> but we work in tens. It's still in tens. So I'm going to redeem myself from that one. <laughs> um, sorry, a hundred meters of football field. I should know that. Um, football field, yeah. So you can see here, here's the detail. This is the difference between your cell size. Getting back to it again. Cell size, depending on how much detail your map needs. If, if you've got a map that's, not overly hilly, then obviously you don't need to keep coming down. What's the pros and cons? The more lower the meter cell size you go to, why, why don't we just why don't we just make this one? Why don't we make just a cell size one? How about that? Hmm? That's great. Except if you make that one, and then you go ahead and make that four oh nine six or something, right? What you're going to find, once you try to run this, it's, it, it can affect all of the speed of the game. So you want to be careful when you're doing your, your cell size. You can always change this. You can always go and test it and go, oh, I'll, I'll, try, I'll try 512 and, oh, and then, okay. The first thing that defines your map is the size. How many meters is your map size? Well, I know mine is, you know, that distance. It's, it's stated there. Right? So I know that's the distance of my maps. So this number times this number will equal this number. 5 times 512 equals 2,560 meters. Now, if I want to keep my terrain size the same size, because it's a real world, I need to half that. Right? And I would need to then double that. Okay? So what's happened now is two and a half times 1024 is 2560. So this is the process of building this detail. How should you do it? It's going to be a matter of you guys testing it and toying with it. 
Now, I know some people are going to argue with me, go, oh, but that's wrong. You're teaching wrong. No, toy with it is what I'm saying, because each one of these cells is detail. It's going to have your X, your Y, and your Z. So it's height, length, and depth. So we want to make sure that we've got enough detail in our map and our meter cell size is going to be accurate like this. How do you know? You do it, you reprocess the terrain, and you test it. See how it looks, see how it feels. But if you make the mistake of setting it to the highest number thinking that's the answer to everything, trust me, it's not. You will run into problems once you test it on a server. So um, that's what I'm saying. Always go through. If you're looking for information, please take your time. Read through this because when you start building a map and whether it's a real life or whatever, you'll find your tiling, making the tiles because your map is made up of little tiles. Every time you roam across the land or fly across the land, certain tiles are turned on and certain tiles are turned off with your textures. So the computer has to has to process all of this and these are called map frames and you'll even notice you'll see this blur that runs along the edge when you're looking at an actual map um, that is completely normal but it's because it's stretching the tiles out to match it's another complicated thing i won't go into but um, this is something you guys want to spend a bit of time learning because it is kind of very very handy uh, so that's map frames Spend a bit of time, look over them, but remember this one common factor that will save you a lot of headache. The first thing you must determine is the size of your map. If you imported using the QGIS method that I outlined in my previous videos, then what's going to happen inside the actual folder where you bring it in, there will actually be a text file located in here as well. Okay. Um, and that text file will actually contain the information you need to know exactly what it is. And it's called export, GTD export. This is telling you your grid size, your cell size, your terrain size. It's showing the pixels, don't mix them up, your meters and your pixel size. They're different, but they seem the same. So make sure that you carefully pay attention. This GTT export is part of the QGIS method. So if you've got QGIS installed and you put the game terrain tools in there, um, this will give you this file. It'll also give you the colors, the RGB, red, green, blue colors of your mask like this. So you can also tell um, exactly what you need. So having this file here saves a lot of headaches. Okay. The latitude and longitude, you, you may not use those, but you will use those if you want to edit your sky, like your nighttime sky. For example, in mine, uh, which I might give you guys a quick demonstration of it so you can see it running. If you look at your night sky, and you guys, probably most of you are in the northern hemisphere, uh, you will notice that you get the northern hemisphere skies, uh, stars. We're in the southern hemisphere. So it's kind of pointless me trying to do an Aussie map if I don't have those particular stars. So what you need to do is you change your config file, you put in those coordinates, and then it will automatically know where the stars in the night sky should be. So let me give you a quick look at mine. And this is my toy map, guys. As I said, build a little small map like I've done. That way you can mess with it. It loads very quickly in Terrain Builder. You can have some fun and, and a feel for it. And then what you learn from that, add that to your real map. That's one of the greatest tips I think I can ever give you guys. Trial and error. Back it up. Always back it up. Always be saving. Always back it up. Make sure you're always saving it because, you know, headaches. You can lose. I know someone lost a year's worth of work all because they never backed it up. And uh, I've done it after three months so the reason mine always starts at night is, believe it or not is because i'm in the southern hemisphere so whenever i jump into my map it always starts at night so let's run over to wayne poo's pub just right here so this is my dear late friend wayne's pub that i built to, to now we look at the night sky we can see if we look around like that, uh, we can see Orion's belt, which is what people call the fry pan, saucepan, whatever you want. 
and we can see right here the point of stars and right there is the southern cross which is on our aussie flag that is latitude and longitude coordinates simply pumped into your your map config so um and here is you're pretty well seeing uh an example of a map uh let me just um change the the night today for you guys let's get it get it a nice aussie outback day or is it get a good season so we get that real aussie look to it there we go it's that real sun going down aussie kind of hot sweating yourself off kind of look that's the map press that come back down there you go there's the aussie red desert sun going down um so as you can see this is uh, my sample map that i was talking about using that thing you know custom textures and um, a custom model now this one is an actual model uh matt ost who i originally was an armor mod that he built and then i had to rewrite everything in it to fit suit um no more add-on builder akira's only and um yeah you can see these are the kind of things you can achieve there you are weighty poos <laughs> yeah when there's pub and uh, a bit of gratuitous advertising so, so this is the kind of thing that you can achieve i don't think in in that long a time once you get the grasp on stuff um oh great channel by the way I always plug them daisy podcast i was on there once and they're a fabulous bunch of guys have a listen to them they're they're always broadcasting check out their channel and um this sort of gives you a bit of an idea of the kind of things that you can do you know as i said it's it's a process of learning and one of the tips i always give everybody um on my discord on the download section check out the one of each file i think was given by richie this places one of each object down on the corner of your map so that if you want to see what an object looks like anywhere you can actually look at it but not only look at it you can also grab items and copy and paste them anywhere on the map you want so it's kind of a handy way of seeing all the different models without having to to go through the the other method that's one of each which is located um on my uh my download section on my discord it's all free guys there's no charge so it's a good way of just seeing what models are out there and on my other map, I actually put a tree, one of each tree on the bottom corner of my map so that I can refer to each tree as well. Um, so it kind of gives you a bit of a, an idea of a couple little tricks that I learned and I kind of like try to teach people. Um, it's not on this one, it's on my other one. But yeah, I recommend doing that. Download that, put that on there and give that a bit of a shot because it's it's a nice way to be able to look at buildings and stuff. There's, there's rock. We. You want to see the size of the rock and get on top of it to give you an idea it's as tall as the bloody uh eiffel tower so i've got run to the edge and you'll see what i mean so now this was all brought through remember using qgis method so the entire thing to bring it in probably took me less than less than a half an hour now and then I just threw some textures down, and I've not really made this a proper map, but I'm going to put it online for people to hang out and go to the pub and do death matches if they want. It's kind of up to you guys. So if you get an idea of just the altitude now on this rock, my mother climbed this rock several years ago. I think it gives you an idea of its scale and that magnitude. So that's the kind of thing I was talking about. If we look at the textures down below, that's a sat map. That's an image. But if I zoom in uh you will notice that as we zoom in the sat map begins to match the textures seamlessly see that see how they start to match seamlessly now the process of doing that wasn't me drawing every single shape the way i used to do it i found another method to do that so that you can automatically drop down your grass textures and trees where you want them and then the map looks nice and seamless when you zoom in without all that you know things changing which i've seen happen on a lot of you know other maps out there so another thing to teach you guys coming up as well so i've got tons of cool stuff uh daisy editor if you haven't used daisy editor um it's a great tool that lets you do pretty well everything um for testing i use it for testing i don't really use map design on this uh only because um it's um it has a few funny little features which don't function properly and i don't 
you know it puts the floats things off the ground and certain things i can't do so i just use it for my testing purposes but inclement dab is the genius behind this bad boy and the dude is an absolute uh, genius to say the least um i haven't got any well i haven't imported my other models but i was going to show you some of my custom ones put on there but that's pretty well that so there you go guys you can see the process of what it takes uh to go ahead and make a um a daisy map um if we're talking about time frames and you said to yourself how long would it take from start to end to build a map look in my opinion i think it's this i think if you're willing to sacrifice if you could sacrifice four hours a day and you're willing to put in four hours a day six days a week I cannot see why you couldn't, within six months, produce a really cool functioning map. Remember, you've still got a learning curve, but I think you could build a functioning functioning map within six months. And I'm a believer of this, the 80% principle. Get it to 80% ready. Don't wait for 100%, stick to 80%. If you can get it 80% that you can play it, put it online, toy with it, then that's better than having a dream and never having anything happen because once you get it online and you see it happening you get more inspired you know so that's why i often recommend to people don't worry if if it's not perfect just you know get it to 80 percent ready and throw it online have a bit of fun with it enjoy it you know this is the whole purpose of enjoying um what we're doing here is learning and developing stuff let's move on to another subject which is a bit taboo and most people don't talk about it and that is the dollars okay I know there are people out there that want to do this for money. And I'll tell you this, it's cost me a fair bit to be able to set up my server, set up my, um, my website, Vimeo hosting, uh, my time, so on and so forth, et cetera, et cetera. There is a hell of a lot of work going into that and time. I do have some Patreons and I'm really thankful to those Patreons and a shout out to Nigel Thomas and Matthew and Mike, um, and uh alex trust yes thank you brother and a few others out there that have, have you know helped me and they've actually helped me buy this nice new can't see it and because the blue screen um a nice chair for my spine because i got pretty bad spinal injuries and um yeah it's helped is there money in this okay well i think there's money in anything it just depends how some woman's going to go about doing this now if your motive is to make money out of it i would tell you right from the start don't let that drive you. It's probably the last thing you ever want to do is, is do this for money because you will be probably disappointed. Now, I'm having said that, I'm not to say that you can't do that. I'm not saying that you could not make money out of it. If I go ahead and I look at people like um, the 1SK server in Australia, their membership base, their um, tier level subscriptions is still pretty huge. So... $5,000 a month, $10,000, $25,000. It's quite possible. Is it in the realms of possibility? Yeah. Is it my motive? No. But I'm just saying, if that is your key driving motive to do this, um, I would be a little bit cautious about doing that. But if you think you can do it, well, either you're going to go to Unreal Engine and build a game and sell it, or you're going to start out on this and, and run a server and monetize it. Fine. Stick within the legislation, the rules that bi have said don't go and break those um because that won't be good if you do that uh but by all means if if you want to do this and make a dollar for i i have nothing wrong with that some people don't like that people don't agree with it let's face it bi make money you put in the work you probably deserve something for all that effort as well um now if you're looking at doing yourself up um something that is going to you know turn into a business you need to consider two options. First of all, should I stick with modding DayZ or should I just go to Unreal Engine? You know, should I should I just go to Unreal Engine and start learning that? This is completely up to you. But I will tell you one thing. If you touch this, if you go ahead and touch Unreal Engine, I don't believe, unless you have any real good previous knowledge, you will not get a functioning map running within two years okay 
as opposed to three to six months if you really hammer it with Daisy. So I'm just giving you the facts. Could you make more money out of, of Unreal? Of course you could. If you own the game and you sell the game, then obviously you make all the money and you don't have to worry about anything else. But it would, I think Unreal, my opinion would require a team of, of people to work on. You need someone on models and someone on coding it, someone on graphics and someone on sounds. You know. Then you can probably hammer something out with enough knowledge. You might be able to do it inside of a couple of years, maybe even a year if you've got a really good team and, you, and they're all being paid. But I, I would stick to Daisy if you're starting out and you're wanting to learn. That's just my greatest advice to you guys out there regarding um, the option if people are looking at making this a financial or a learning curve. But having said that, Think of it like this. If this is a learning curve for you of game design and learning, get the ideas and put them together, modding and Daisy is probably the greatest place to start. Uh, big community, lots of information, a good solid engine to work with. Um, very limited documentation, apart from the stuff that here and there and the stuff I'm trying to produce. But that's my opinion. So if anyone has any questions, anyone wants to ask anything at all um, regarding anything, uh, I'm happy to answer those questions um, um, in any way. Uh, feel free if you are on the if you're on the my Discord channel and you want to jump in the DZ podcast talking channel and ask me a question. You can ask me that way or whatever. It's completely up to you. I got a few more minutes. I was going to stream for and um, trying to fill in all the answers. And while I'm doing that, I'll see if I can find anything else that you guys may be interested in that may help you out um just looking through my stuff here to see what I do use substance painter if you go to make your own textures substance painter is very very good to learn lots of YouTube videos on it so I recommend learning that um pretty handy um the other thing too is uh this free program called Meister Task it allows you to just simply create things and drag them and drop them in what needs to be done this week. And then you can add, you know, reminders and so on and so forth. And it's just a way of tracking. It's free. It's just a way of tracking your work. You know, oh, I didn't do that today. I'll do it next week. Or I might create a new one. You know, I'm going to do a podcast this week. Um, so it's kind of a handy tool. I do recommend using this and the the MindMeister, um, they're both free tools and they just help you to map. And once you really get into mapping on this, um, where is it? Let's see if I can switch switch to Meister. Oh, they, they switch between the two, which is kind of cool. So I can switch from here over to the other one. It'll switch between programs. So they work they work together quite nicely. Um, good programs. I won't go too much on about it. But anyway, that's that. Um, definitely recommend using those tools for learning, um, for, for organizing your stuff. Um, what else can I think of before we go on here? Um, Photoshop, if you haven't got Photoshop, grab GIMP. GIMP is always handy. Uh, a big rule, back up your P drive. Please guys, you know, even if you take your main map and then you simply add to archive and compress it and do that regularly. If you finish a day's work, just compress your archive, and then the first thing you want to do is upload it onto Google Drive. So it's not on your computer. If your computer crashes or something terrible happens, you've always got a copy of all your hard work. Always do this. Always be saving. It'll save you. Save you a lot of headaches um, in that process. So um, what am I working on at the moment? Let's just cancel that for the moment. Things I've been working on at the moment, you guys probably have seen that I am working on some animals. Um, I've been working on a dingo, which is coming along. Uh, it is actually working. And a fox as well, which is functioning. So I've been working on all of these. And these are really, really working good. So I'm kind of happy with my... Um, progress and learning all the process of doing these special shout out to Dino Beanos who uh, was one of the guys who did the first tutorials on that that helped me build my first animal and now I built my second and um, basically a dingo is a dog scaled down 
that's all it really is so and i got a fox and a few other ones and i've been working on oh some some scatter which i've got saved somewhere i've built i have to double check where i put them but i've actually built some ground scatter grass and stuff like that so that's kind of some of the things i've been messing with non-stop lately um today's project is to finish the uh the gum tree which i think i've finished uh mostly finished um that that whole gum tree done all the lods level of distance and everything else so um so it's funny some of me put them in they disappear i don't know which folder it's in oh that's my bunch of of gum trees that I'm working on small to large so they're the small to large range and the other one that I'm working on is that one there which is actually this one here and it's got all the uh, the different lods and everything else so that's what I've been hammering myself away at trying to finish this off and this has come up actually quite nice now quite surprised uh, if I can open that one over there see if I can hit the other button see what it does there it goes over there chill screen there we go and if I turn on uh, that other little option it should come up secondary screen and then if I hit this button here you guys will see it I'll just give you an idea of you know no one showed me how to do this by the way I literally had to work this out from bits of information I found here and there and even the leaves are nice and detailed and they blow in the breeze Whee! look at that so that's my gum tree and I'm still working on the I've got the different levels of detail different distances as you move away you'll find they um denigrate or get reduced to pixels which is what they have to do in order to make the engine not crap out and die on us so um, i probably don't need that many lods i'm going to delete a few so the idea of it is that's a flat one there the flat one when you look at the distance i'm just going to change the rv mat will just be those flat ones you see so and um that's pretty well what i've been working on at the moment um you know just working on all those particular things um dingo i don't know if the dingo will come up here Let's see if he does let's have a look at him come on external viewer it's trying to oh yeah it's got an error in that one i have to, I have to fix that one I've got to fix that one there's a, an error in one of the config files but yeah, um, that's pretty well where I've been sort of just toying around, figuring stuff out and working out how to get everything working. Because it, it has been actually quite a lesson when I look at something like my palm tree. Um, if you look at my palm tree here, and I just open up on the second screen. What I've, I'll show you. Now, I'm going to give you an insight into how I learnt to do let me just get rid of that error i'll give you an insight on how my mind works which is kind of warped uh and how i managed to get things working so having a look at my palm tree here okay i really didn't have anything to go by so what i did was uh i did what anyone sane person does is i just simply googled it until i found information on the, the community and I found this website which is for armor and it explains certain things so it tells me that the first image for a tree has to be less than don't ask me how I figure out this doesn't say less than it says minus less than 1500 so that's how many surfaces so I had to sit there and individually make sure that the faces down the bottom there it's 13,000 so it's lower then each one because they make no sense lod 1-2 well that's actually just the first lod divided by two so i get it okay took me a while to figure that out and the next one is this lod 2 divided by two so if that's 
say if that one's 10,000, this one must be 5,000, this must be 2,500, and that's how the LODs sort of I figured out. The M LOD uh, is referring to the final image, which is really just known as a billboard in most games, which you can see there, which is a kind of a, from a distance, you can sometimes see them in DayZ. Um, and this one here just has 16 faces, uh, points and, and 20 faces. And I checked some of the Daisy ones, and yeah, lo and behold, they were actually there or above. So using this little bit of research, I discovered this little page. Then your LOD shadows, LOD volumes, I'll explain those later on, your geometry. And what I like down here was it told you the things that each one must have. So this was kind of important. Um, so I just sort of read through one at a time now. Although it was hard work to figure it out, now that I've got the knowledge in my head, I can not only do it, I can teach people how to do it. Because to my better knowledge, I don't think there's anyone else teaching um, how to make trees. So I want to, you know, give you guys a bit of handy knowledge as well as how to build some cool stuff that look like that. See? And the cool thing that I did work out was a wind mask, which I thought was... Pretty sweet. The wind mask itself was kind of a, kind of a, there was no instructions for a wind mask. What is a wind mask? Well, we can see the leaves are blowing over there. And why are they blowing? And that's simple because there's one image file that is contained inside of here. That if I go in there, one of them will actually have a wind map which is a funny looking image, which I made up that looks like this. It meant nothing to me at first till I examined some of the other wind maps from DayZ. And what I did was I managed to figure out that wherever there is black, that's less wind and red means more wind. So all I had to do was take my um, palm image like that. So you can see there's my palm image. And you see the leaves go that way, right? And then when we look over at, I don't think I can open two files at once. I'll try that no. open. I don't think it'll open with, see if it opens two. Hoping it will, so I can compare you as we can. There we go. Oh. <laughs> open three. Down on one, you get a million. So as we can see here, if I zoom that out and I give you guys a look. So you kind of see what it is here is, here's your leaves, leaves. Um, the bottom of the leaf I don't want to move as much but I want all these tips to move so you just create a gradient in Photoshop uh, I didn't know how to do this before I just figured it out you just drop this image into Photoshop and then you create a new layer you draw a little mask hit the gradient tool change your color drag it in the direction you want and because you make this slightly transparent you can see the leaves below and then when you're honky donkey done what you end up with is a really cool tree that waggles in the wind. As you can see over here with my tree, you can see how the leaves are moving. So stuff to come, stuff that I will help you guys learn if you are interested in learning how to do those things. All you need to do is hit me up, let me know, and I will be happy to teach you guys whatever I can. Um, so that's that, and um, been playing a bit of Daisy with little grandma lately. We've got our own little uh, server running at the moment. Hey, you guys, if you if you're ever bored, like I know it's probably not a KO AS kill on site web, you know, server. But uh, Big Crown Bars DZ Academy, you can just jump on there anytime you want, have a run around. I got some alleys on there, or we're putting new vehicles on there. I do have some few hidden of my own models running on there as well uh and i'll be testing a lot of things on there so i do have dogs and things like that but there'll be new stuff coming out which if you're bored and you want to have a bit of a toy around with um grandpa's uh, map and you just want to have a bit of fun feel free to jump on now grandma's on most of the times uh, we're in gmt plus 10 i think but she's on most of the day um she got off before she was playing um but yeah this is our little little server you're welcome to jump on anytime have a play around um i'm more than happy to have people jump in uh if i see you there and you need a vehicle or like feel free jump in 
but I do test a lot of things. So once again, having a server like this uh, lets me test some of my mods online. And I think if you're building a map, you're building mods, you need to test them. And offline isn't a isn't a true reflection of how they're going to run on the server because you're running them locally. You want to run them remotely and then see how things pan out from there. So that's what I do. Um, I don't know. Uh, let me just turn on my admin tools. Me. I'm left-handed, so everything's backwards. And oh, this is the place Grandma built. This is her little monstrosity. So, yeah, come down, join us, multi-level, We Got a nice little garage down here, as you can see. And uh, I just test a lot of things, so I have a little space up the top here. You probably know where this is, up in Novo. Come up and join us sometime. Testing out some uh, models that I'm porting across here. Um, this is the car dealership one. So it's uh, got roller doors and everything else like that. Excuse the ground, it's not level here, so it's not going to show up properly. But I usually just test things like that. I empty this lot, and I just throw it in my buildings and test them but yeah if you're ever bored jump in come and join us down here up at novo and um there's a grandson's place that he's been building as well so uh don't mess around he's a really good sniper <laughs> so that's pretty well sort of where we've been playing at the moment and sometimes we just like a break and a bit of a run around run around my map and and that and then i do have the other one which i ain't going to show that yet you're going to see that soon guys rosebud rosebud will come soon so but uh, yeah, just a bit of fun, a bit of uh, entertainment. But you look at the quality of trees and you look at the leaves and stuff. So I've, even in my model, I know I've managed to match that quality. Um, and it's not, not a windy day today, so the leaves aren't moving that much. So, so that's it, guys. I won't ramble on too much more. Uh, if anyone's got any questions, anything they want to ask, feel free. Oh, we've got dogs in ours, by the way. So if you guys... Uh, haven't had doggies in your map yet i strongly recommend putting some doggies in your map because they're a lot of fun um where is it let me show you quickly another good friend of mine uh hunter cz uh, he's uh the designer of daisy doggos we had a bit of a chat the other day and i just hit home where are we oh, it fell through the ground but yeah, he's put dogs in there. So if you guys haven't seen the dogs yet, I strongly recommend checking out the dogs. They're absolutely so much fun. Honestly, you'll you'll be you'll be glad you put the dogs in there. Um, is it? I'm left down. I just changed my keyboard over to the other side, and now I. <laughs> Where's my dog? Where are you? Ah, here you are. There's the big boy. Look at you. Look at you, you big fella. So they're the doggos, and uh, he's created a new few new dogs as well, my right wheeler. And I got the dingo, which I'm going to pass him across the dingo soon as well. Let's go for a walk, son. And uh, it, the dogs will actually hunt the zombies for you, which saves you a lot of trouble. So um, you can go attack them. Go get them. Go get them. Going to get them? Go get those. Go get those zombies. So. Yeah, so they're a lot of fun. He's done a really, really good job, CZ. And now if I go over there and draw her attention. Come here. I'm being attacked. Get her. Get her. What are you doing, you lazy? What are you running off for? Go get her. There he goes. Bite her. Bite her. What, do I need a pit bull? What's wrong with you today? Get her. Get her. Grandma loves these, like little grandma when she plays, because they, they help her stay alive longer. <laughs> go on, get her. I don't use her much, but there you go. Ooh, he just about got her. So, yeah, he's got a bunch of new dogs coming out. I'm going to donate the dingo to him as well, and um, Fox and a few other things as well. So, oh, you want some of this, do you? You don't want any of this. They can kill your dog, too, so you got to be careful. There we go. Good boy. Useless, aren't you? Anyway, that's it. Thought I'd show you guys a little bit of the old doggos. Um, so, yeah. Once again, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, any questions, um, anything you want to know, don't forget I've got the Discord channel. It's uh, free. The um, There's no memberships. I don't charge for that kind of stupid stuff. And also, um, don't forget the DZ Academy, guys. If you 
haven't joined the DZ Academy, all you do is uh, jump over www.dejaiz.com. Click on here to join, it's free. And you can get access to all the new tutorials coming out soon. And of course, um, special shout out to all of my wonderful members over there at the um, DZ Academy um, that are making this channel for everybody so much better. There's a little grandson. Oh, sorry, just do the stream. It's not working. He can't. He can't join. That's all right. I don't know why that is. Um, a few people. I got to check all those answers and questions. It's coconut the trees I was building. So yeah, come along. Join us in here. Uh, the DZ, uh, my my channel here, and anything I can help you guys out with. If it's not me, there's always someone there to help somebody out. So feel free to join us. Probably rambled on a bit, but I hope you enjoyed it. And um, feel free. It's time to take a break. I'll speak to you all very, very soon. And most of all, don't forget, have a great day.